in uh, 1908, a young Jewish immigrant, Lazarus Averbuch, walked up to the door of the Chicago chief of police, George Shippey, whereupon George Shippey killed him in his house and said that as soon as he saw him, he knew he was an anarchist because he looked Sicilian or Jew, like a Sicilian or a Jew. That's the central event in my book. I'll read from a chapter which contains uh, an autopsy report and, um, and also um, features Lazarus' sister, Olga. After the autopsy is performed by the esteemed Dr. Hunter, Assistant Chief Schuttler shows the report to William P. Miller, who is rather touched by the newly found professional intimacy between Assistant Chief and himself. Body of a man about 20 years old, five feet seven inches tall, weighing about 120 pounds, somewhat undernourished, over the left frontal eminence puncture wound one fourth inch in diameter, puncture wound over the left side of the chin, puncture wound in the right eye, puncture wound two inches above the clavicle on the right side, puncture wound two inches to the right of the left nipple, puncture wound at the lower left angle of the left scapula, puncture wound in the medial line of the back of the head and beneath the skull. At this point, a bullet was found. The cranium is of peculiar formation. The hair is dark. The skin is of dark complexion. The nose is not of pure Jewish type, but has a Semitic cast. From other evidence, however, it is clear that the man was a Jew. No filling in the teeth. Hence well formed, indicating manual labor. In removing the skull cap, the skull was found to be exceptionally thin. Three bullet wounds were found to have punctured the brain. The puncture wound in the proximity of the left nipple was found to have pierced the heart, other organs normal. The thin skull cap, the large mouth, the receding chin, the low forehead, the pronounced cheekbones, and the oversized simian ears all indicate a well-marked type of degeneracy. In our opinion, said unknown man came to his death from shock and hemorrhage following bullet wounds to the body. They are creatures of a different world, Assistant Chief says pensively, as though he was working on the thought while Miller was reading. Assistant Chief's office is dark, only a desk light is on, and the window panes are drumming on the wind assaults. Indeed they are, William P. Miller says. The empty streets crawling between the dark buildings, the unwieldy carriages pulling through thick sheets of rain and deep puddles, the disoriented freezing drunks and the late shift workers, all are flashed into brief existence by a thunderbolt. The storm is punishing Chicago, whipping its citizens with hatred. Here it is, all the things. For an instant, the shards on the floor glitter like remote celestial bodies. The petrified rye loaf appears on the table, then it vanishes. The fire in the stove is still expiring with nauseating smoke. Cinerous flakes slip through the cracks in the stove and land on Olga's hair and face, light as breath. She feels the weight of her hands in her lap, and when lightning cleaves the dark space, she sees them as skinned little babies. They perish, and the only thing left is the damp coarseness of her dress. The thunder rose away, ending with a spiteful last grumble. No point in lighting the lamp, for the rapture would extinguish it. Dear mother, our Lazarus is asleep, but out of that sleep, we may not awake him. She cannot send a letter home until the proper burial, unless Kaddish is said. They will dump him into a hole in the ground, like a beast. Will they even put him in a casket? Will they wash him, or did they leave it to the rain? Will the polizai kick his corpse into the grave? Will they piss into it? She leaps out of her chair and makes two steps forward, one step on the shards, one step back on the shards. The forks and knives and the cups clink and crankle. The noise makes her furious. She grabs a fork as if to stab someone, but then stands with her hand half raised. The spikes of the fork pointed at the darkness. The rain is scudding against the window pane. In the far corner, in the deepest darkness, something watches and listens. Dear mother, there is no good way to say this. Lazarus is no more. No, nothing. Dear mother, it seems we can never escape grief. We have lost Lazarus. What have we done to deserve so much suffering? 
Her dress reeks of doleful sweat and policemen's cigars. Her stockings are torn. The heel is broken on her left shoe. He cried when he lost one of the calfskin gloves he received as a bar mitzvah present. Lazarus in his silly boy sailor suit. He used to be afraid of sparrows. Lazarus at the bar mitzvah reading from the Torah haltingly. Why does the Jewish day begin at sunset? Lazarus teaching a stray dog to fetch in the refugee camp in Chernovitz. The dog watching him with confused disinterest. And then the way he pushed his ears forward with his fingers and jutted his lower jaw to look like a monkey. The depth of his laughter when Mr. Mandelbaum did his tricks. An egg would disappear and reappear behind Lazarus's jug ear. He refused to acknowledge the first gossamer on his chin. The taste of his curls when she kissed them, sweet and salty, sometimes bitter. His cold face in the morgue, no heartbeat in his chest, nothing. Thank you.